Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Slow City Kids Easter at Home. I am so excited that you guys are tuning in and joining us this morning. My name is Skyler, and I get the honor and the privilege of being the next gym pastor here at Slow City Church. And I'm so excited for today. I love Easter, and I really believe that Easter is supposed to be one big party. And so I'm wishing you a big, happy Easter this morning. And I want to hear from you guys. I want you to yell, yell, tell me happy Easter as loud as you can right now. That wasn't loud enough. I need a little bit louder. This is a big day. We've got a lot to celebrate. One more time, as loud as you can. All right, I can take that. You guys check out this video, and then we're going to play some games together today. Easter, a time for fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies. And then there are the weird parts of Easter, like fake grass, plastic eggs, these things, chocolate bunnies, and people dressed as bunnies, which is interesting. But what does all this stuff have to do with Easter? And if this holiday is about more than candy and wearing uncomfortable clothes to church and lunch with your relatives, what makes Easter happy? Well, I don't know about you, but I love Easter. Easter is my favorite holiday and there's so many fun things about Easter. And so I was just wondering, what is your favorite Easter candy? Talk about it together as a family, but I, I brought some Easter candy with me today. And so as these candies come to me, I just want you to yell as loud as you can through the screen so that I can hear you whenever your favorite Easter candy is thrown to me. Okay, so here we go. Maybe your favorite Easter candy is a Cadbury egg and you just love Cadbury eggs and all the caramel on the inside. Or maybe your favorite Easter candy is a Reese's egg. I love Reese's eggs. I think these are my favorite. And maybe you love Reese's eggs and you just can't get enough of Reese's eggs. Or maybe your favorite Easter candy is Starburst jelly beans and not just Starburst jelly beans, the, all the red ones. Cause we all know the red ones are the best ones. Or maybe your favorite Easter candy is Peeps. Peeps are so good. What brings me to our first game today, Peeps. Jousting. Well, our first game this morning is Peep Jousting. So me and my good buddy Jordan, we have two peeps, but these aren't just ordinary peeps. This peep's name is Baby Yoda the Peep. Jordan, what is your peep's name? He goes by several names. Leonardo is one. The other is uh, my boy Blue. My boy Blue the Peep. And so... These peeps don't really like each other. And so what we're gonna do for this game this morning is we're gonna take these two peeps and we're gonna set them on a microwavable plate. Facing off like they are jousting because they are going to joust. And we're gonna put these peeps in the microwave. And the first peep to melt the fastest and let their toothpick strike the other peep is the winner. So what you guys need to do at home you need to decide who is on team Baby Yoda the Peep and who is on team Leonardo, my boy Blue. Leonardo, my boy Blue the Peep. You pick the green Peep or the blue Peep, and then we're going to go over here and we're going to put these things in the microwave and we're going to see which one wins the jousting competition. Pick your side, and here we go. All right, we are. We're bringing the peeps into the bathroom because it's darker back here and we want you guys to be able to see as best you can, okay? So remember, pick your side, okay? Green, Baby Yoda peep is me. And then Jordan is Leonardo. What was yours? Leonardo, my boy Blue. Leonardo, my boy Blue peep. All right, here we go, y'all. It's a fair fight. We, I also went home to get my microwave because you can see better. All right, hit the lights. Hit the lights. Everybody ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh, no. Uh, 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 green's making a move. Uh, green's making a uh, move. Uh, oh, oh, he blocked it. Oh! oh green wins. My boy Blue let me down. If you picked baby Yoda peep, you are the winner. Woo hoo!
Our next game for the morning is called Easter Egg Throwdown. So here's what you guys need to do. Parents, you guys need to go find a, a laundry basket or just a basket from your house. And then you guys need to go find a bunch of clean, not dirty, a bunch of clean socks. So go ahead, take a minute, pause the video, go grab a basket, go grab probably like 15, 20 pairs of socks and then come back and I'll explain the game to you guys. Here's how Easter egg throwdown works. You guys are gonna take your laundry basket and you're gonna place it empty on one side of your living room. And then you're gonna take your socks and you're going to take them apart if they're matched. And parents, you're just gonna kinda of make a pile of the socks and mix them up around the room. And then kids, there's gonna be a timer on the screen, 60 second timer, and you guys have one minute to find the socks match them with their pairs and then shoot them across the room into the basket and you have to see how many pairs of socks you can get into the basket in under 60 seconds you're racing against the clock ready set whenever you're ready i'm not going to say go now because you need time to get ready whenever you're prepared and you're ready to go then you press play and continue the video and then your 60 second timer will start Hope you guys had a blast playing Easter Egg Throwdown, but here's what just happened. Now, you have a bunch of socks, clean socks hopefully, sitting in your living room in front of you in a laundry basket, and I don't know if you noticed, but if you roll up the socks nice and tight, they kind of look like an Easter egg. Maybe a goose egg, mine, because it's gray. But here's what I would love for you guys to do now. Parents, you guys take the socks, hide them throughout your home, and instead of doing an Easter egg hunt, do an Easter sock hunt. When you guys are done with your Easter sock hunt, you guys can come back, press play, and we will get rolling with our teaching and worship this morning. Before we sing some songs this morning, we are going to work on our memory verse together. And today is the day to celebrate our memory verse. Our memory verse says, Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. He was buried, he was raised on the third day, just as the scriptures said. And so in just a second, the slide is gonna be put on the screen for you guys to work on the verse together as a family. But here's the deal. I know in the past few weeks, we've done different accents and we've done different things, but today is the day that we use our loud voice like we do in Slow City Kids and we just scream this verse and we celebrate it together as we memorize it together as a family. Take some time, work on memorizing this verse together and then whenever you guys are ready, press play. We're gonna sing some worship songs together and then we're gonna watch our Stories of the Bible video.
just as the scriptures just as the scripture says he was buried he was raised from the dead on the third day just as the scriptures just as the scriptures say Stories of the Bible, Jesus' Sacrifice. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms, <laughs> and even raised people from the dead. Uh, wahoo! <laughs> the Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seemed okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on. His clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own. And then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, 
said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Have you ever felt scared? Or have you ever felt a little hopeless? Might be the right word. I remember when I was a soccer player, one time me and my team, we were in a really big game, a really, really important game, and we went down two goals. We were losing by two goals to this team that we really wanted to beat, and it was halftime, and they were just dominating the game. I mean, it just seemed like all hope was lost, it seemed like we were going to lose and my soccer career for my life was going to be over. But we came back in the second half and we scored one goal. And then it was only two to one. And then a few minutes later, we scored again. And then it was two to two. And then in the last minute of the game, we scored a goal and we won three to two. And our season stayed alive and we got to be, keep playing. I don't know, boys, if you're a sports fan, maybe you remember when your favorite sports team won a big game or they came back and won something when it seemed like all hope was lost and it seemed like they weren't going to win. But in the, in the last moment, in the nick of time, something happened and something changed and it just changed everything. And it made you so happy and it gave you so much excitement and so much reason to celebrate. That's what Easter does for us. Like we learned about last week, the disciples were up in the upper room with Jesus and they had this last meal with him and then they come out and then Jesus is crucified and they're scared, they're hopeless. They think that they think it's over. But then sure enough, three days later, they find out that Jesus has risen from the dead, that Jesus had, had died for them, that he had died for them sins. And he's, he doesn't have to stay in the grave, but he is alive. He is risen and, and he has ascended into heaven and he's waiting for us. And the disciples find this out and they are just so excited, so filled with joy. They start running to his tomb to see that it's empty and coming back. And there's just so much excitement. Whenever just a, a few hours before that, they were so scared and so afraid. And that's what I want you guys to know today that because of what Jesus has done for you, you don't have to be afraid. Because Jesus is alive, you don't have to be afraid. Jesus came down to the planet. He lived a life just like me, just like you. And he died on a cross. And when he died on that cross, he took all of my sin, all of my mistakes, every lie I've told, every bad thing I've done, he took every mistake you've made, every sin you've committed, every lie you've told, every, every sin that you've done, and he forgave it. And the Bible tells us that anybody who chooses to put their trust in Jesus and what he has done for us will be saved. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put some more questions on the screen for you guys to talk about as a family. And things are going to be a little different this week. Whenever you're done with those questions, press play on the video and come back. And I've got one more thing for us today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining us and me for Slow City Kids Easter at Home. I hope you guys had a blast getting to play games, sing songs, and talk about Jesus together as a family. So I've got one more thing for you. We're gonna do a little outro video 
um, that uses some some laundry like we just did with our socks that kind of explains the Easter story in a really really cool way and then after that there's gonna be another song that's gonna play on the screen this song is called happy day it's really upbeat it's really full of life and so I just want to give you guys a challenge as a family when that song plays have a giant dance party get up on your feet jump around the, the lyrics will be on the screen you can sing it together but just spend some time celebrating together as a family the good news of what Jesus has done for us. I'm going to pray for us and then you guys can keep rolling, check out those videos and have an amazing Easter together. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. Thank you so much for today. Thank you that, that through videos and things we can still be together in Easter. Thank you so much for Jesus and what he has done for us. We celebrate him that he died and that he conquered the grave for us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the beginning, God created everything. He formed people in his very own image. But then, we turned away from God. Sin entered the world like a dark stain. Still, God loved us so deeply that he made a plan to rescue us. At just the right moment, God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live among us. Jesus healed hearts and minds and bodies. Thousands gathered to hear him teach. Instead of giving lots of new rules, Jesus turned things upside down by making it simple. Love God love others. After three years of traveling and teaching, Jesus and his disciples entered Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast. Huge crowds gathered to welcome him. But while the crowds cheered for Jesus, the religious leaders made plans to arrest him. He was turning their world upside down, and they wanted him gone. As Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his friends, he told them that he would be leaving but would return. His friends didn't understand. That night, one of Jesus' followers, Judas, led soldiers to arrest him. The religious leaders gave Jesus a fake trial and then sent him to Pilate, the Roman governor, who could have him killed. Pilate found Jesus had broken no law and tried to release him, but a mob called for Jesus to be killed. Pilate gave in and handed Jesus over to the Roman soldiers. Jesus was forced to carry the heavy beams of his own wooden cross. On a hill called Golgotha, the soldiers nailed Jesus' hands and feet to the rough wood. The soldiers and people who passed by laughed and mocked him. But from the cross, Jesus asked God to forgive them. Finally, Jesus called out, it is finished. Then he died. The earth shook, rocks split open. Even the soldiers cried, surely he was the son of God. One of Jesus's followers took his body and placed it in a tomb cut from the rock. A huge stone blocked the entrance. Jesus's friends were devastated. They had believed that Jesus was the one God promised, the one who would rescue them, but now he was gone. Their whole world had turned upside down. Jesus's friends stayed hidden in fear for three days, but early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, a close friend of Jesus, hurried to the tomb. She planned to anoint Jesus' body with special spices. As Mary neared the tomb, she saw the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Mary turned to see a man standing near. She didn't recognize him until he said, Mary, it was Jesus, alive. Jesus told her, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Jesus, 
God's Son became like us to lay down His life. Through God's power, He defeated death for all of us, and sin was washed away. One day, He's promised to return, so we can live with Him forever. Celebrate Jesus is alive 